Here we go, guys. 1983. We're keeping the momentum going. How old was I? You want to see? All right. I don't know what you were. I know what I was. I was 16 years old. Guys, we're right in the We're in the meat. The pit. Okay, we're, we're the pit. For us yeah. now, we're starting to say, oh, we know what we like. Hey, Jeez. man, we're getting our, we know what we like, and we're supporting the bands. When they come to the town, we're buying the concerts, we're buying the t-shirts, we're buying the albums as soon as they're released. And this is the album, this is the year. We're just, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to feel the movement. There's something happening, and we are a big part of it. Yeah. We want to share that with you. 1983, the albums are getting harder, harder to squeeze them into 10. Here we go with our top 10 from 83. <laughs> First of all, they're not the, they're, they're not the most metal band out there. Have to but this. but this is a must. They were there to open the doors for the rest of them. Kevin De Bruyne. Quiet Riot, yeah. Metal and Metal Health. Metal Health. Traditionally, when they're not typically a metal metal album, however, <laughs> however, it went number one and knocked off the Police. It was the first real metal album to crack That's number it. one in Billboard. That's all you have to say, Jim. Millions of albums sold, global recognition. These guys were, you know, from, from the early days of Randy Rhodes, they built it all up, and we're not going to go through the whole story, but they well deserve metal health beautiful album cover all the songs are great catchy anthemic is that that's probably yeah. what the word is you know what's funny about that that was the day uh, summer job was uh, strawberry picking yeah and i couldn't get on the bus that day it was too full so we decided to go down i was gonna buy you know what album i was gonna buy night patrol Oh, by, uh, the Night Ranger. Uh, Night Ranger. Don't tell me you love that, me. For that song. For, only for that song. Didn't know anything about it. I really liked that song. And I went down there and I said, you know what? No, I'm going to get Metal Health. Yeah. And I think I made the right choice. Hmm. Because it went to number one. Come on, feel the noise. I'll tell you how I discovered Girls rock here, boys. You know, I got in trouble I, for paying that on the I, high school radio. I discovered that album in the magazines. I can't remember which one. Circus Hit Parade. And so Randy Rose is dead. Randy, sadly, yeah. sadly, sadly, unfortunately, he, he died. And then there was this interest to go back to what bands he was in. The only band that he was really in was Quiet Riot. Was Quiet Riot. So that's when the label went from Dubro to Quiet Riot. You know, again, you know, we're not going to get into that whole thing. But that's where it piqued my interest. And Come On Feel the Noise wasn't a hit yet. They haven't, they, sort of like the album went out there, but people really, really weren't grasping it yet. So I went out and I bought the album because it was dedicated to Randy and he was part of the legacy of Quiet Riot. Put it on, loved it, and then just maybe weeks later, Come On Feel The Noise is all over the radio, then Metal Health is all over the radio, Bang Your Head. Bang your head. And, and this album exploded and actually I had the album right before anything actually took off and yeah. I thought it was a great album. I bought it Kevin right DeBose is a great singer. I couldn't, I slicked my Cadillac, I could have done without, but uh, Thunderbird, it's, what yeah. a way to end the album. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just to end off on this, uh, an album dedicated to Randy Rhodes. Is, he was part of the legacy. The, bat, the album takes off. Kevin Duro, hats off. Frankie, hats off. Rudy, hats off. And Carlos, hats off. Did a great job. Great album. Well deserved. Number 10 on 1983 albums. Next, here's a band that's a favorite of ours album. Who really not, never really got that recognition. I'm anxious to hear. Raven. <laughs> All for oh, one. Oh my God. All for one, Alan. What's All for wrong? one. Jim, I just slapped this on last week. Great Pulled album. it out of the vinyl. Great album. Oh my gosh. The voice, everything. John John Gallagher's voice, the guitar playing, wacko on drums, uh, and, and Michael Wagner. Wagner. Double Trouble Productions with Udo. Executive producer, Johnny Zazula. There you go. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Great album. Uh, I got a Bonsai Records copy. Yeah. Uh, this is the last great Raven album uh, before the influence of the record company came into play <laughs> was stay hard we don't have to go there so on uh, on this is on on everything on on. Oh, break the chain break break the chains oh. everything uh, you know all run run one. silent run deep oh. all for one all for one and uh, athletic rock oh. you know <laughs> You know, there's if everything. you don't have this album, you have to buy this album. So again, you know, Crash Bang Wallop, uh, you know, the Drop uh, Rock Until You Drop, all the previous uh, Wiped Out, that was just pure speed metal. You know, I yeah. mean, this is one that kind of, whoa, let's, it all comes together. Let's put some vocal sensibilities, let's put some catchy choruses, and great musicianship, great production, and it all came together for me on this one never, album. All never for got one. the respect they deserved. All for one. Number eight, Alan. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go to number eight, Alan. <laughs> let's go to number eight, Alvin. Alan. Let's go to number eight, Alan. Riot. 
Born in America. Oh. Born in America. You Rhett Forrester is in the band. Second album. Yep. And uh, they had all kinds. Like most bands, management, let's steal the money, let's... Whatever, I don't want to go there. But they were having a tough time. Released this album with the hope that finally, since they were there, at the beginning, yeah, yeah. at the beginning, we got Quiet Riot on the West Coast, you got Riot on the East Coast coming out of New York. They're right there, the same time as Anvil. Right there, they had built it up a bit. And, and I'm going to tell you and something. now we got Born in America. Pause, pause, pause. That was one of their biggest problems. Quiet Riot was exploding. They said Quiet Riot, and then who's this Riot? And they got overshadowed by the Quiet in the Riot. Go but, ahead, unpause. Yeah, no, for sure. They were underground band, yeah. right? Guy Speranza, Swords and Tequila. It was building, building, building. And then this album, and until Thundersteel. But they were buried. They were buried. Anyways, going back to this album, Born in America, Gunslinger. Yeah. Everything on this album. Vigilante Killer. 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 Uh, everything. Those, those vocals, the guitar playing, the drums. Yeah. Uh, heavy Metal Machine. Heavy Metal Machine. The scream. You got the, <laughs> the drums. Everything. It's a fantastic album. One of my favorites of all time. Born in America, Riot. There you go. Hats off to Mark. Thank you. Another great choice. Now, number seven. This is another genre-defining, career-defining album. Who do we have? Merciful Fate. Okay. Melissa! <laughs> what? I mean, when you take the new wave of British heavy metal and you take Black Sabbath and you put in the devil and you mix it all together, you get this album. European influence. From Denmark. Ah. These guys, from the neoclassical guitars to the falsetto screams. You love this. Not for everybody's falsetto screams of King Diamond, but he's got the low growls as well. King Diamond. This is just another level of musicianship. This is just another level. And they're just so different from the rest of the pack. Well-deserved. This is... What's the album? Uh, Melissa. Melissa, oh yeah, Black your favorite. Black Funeral. Your favorite. Oh my God, this, Merciful every fate. single song on this album is just... Jimmy loves this album. Just incredible. And you know what? It's loved more today than it was back in the day. First time I heard King Diamond was probably on the Metal Files. I heard a few tracks off this album. Ran out, bought it, opened it up, and go, I'm going to hell. <laughs> the album covers <laughs> did stand out. I'm going Merciful to hell. I started reading covers. the lyrics, you know, I suck the blood of Satan, and you know, Satan, Satan, Satan. I love, I Satan. love it, and I'm going hell, to hell. Satan, hell. I love it, and I'm going to hell, and I go, I'm going to put it away. Eh, maybe not. I'm going to put it away. Eh, maybe you not. Stop and I'm going to hell. <laughs> I like it. Good to stop. I'm going to hell. It's <laughs> worth going to hell just for this album, that's right. Jimmy was saying to himself. And when I first heard King Diamond on the radio at late night, I didn't know what he was saying, because, you know, <laughs> you know what he's saying, but when you open it up and you start reading the lyrics, you go, oh, shit, this 60-year-old boy's going to hell. But it was okay. <laughs> it's all good. I was good with it. I was good with it. <laughs> Put a little striper, it was okay. So there you have it, Merciful Fate, Melissa. Okay. All right, number six. This is, like, this is another genre-defining oh. in hair metal. Oh, we are. Molly Crew, shout, shout. Shout at the devil. So there you go. Shout at the devil. Uh, this one I remember like yesterday, Jim. You know, Christmas time. Yeah. Teenage boys. What do we want for Christmas? Albums. Albums. Yeah. Lots of albums. And again, my good buddy Mark, uh, I think he had a, his brother close in age. The two of them both got albums. Hey, great. Bring yeah. them on over. It was Christmas Day. He came over. Slap this on. I'm like, what is this about? You know? And it looks it, that it, kill. It was looks that kill. Uh, of course, Shadow of the Devil. Everything. Red Hot. Da, 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 Red Hot. I, I'm going to probably get a lot of people upset, but, uh, upset, but this is the one and only uh, Molly Crew album. Yeah, I for agree. me, that's me it. Me too, me too. The rest, yeah. you know. It's like, ah! Did, did they even show up for the one after Doctor, Theater of Pain? Were they I think Dr. Feelgood was a good one, but I think this one is... One Hit the, Wonders. The, the, as far as I'm concerned, One Hit Wonders, and this is the album that yeah. makes our top ten for that reason. What an album. The yeah. look, the attitude. You're talking about Guns N' Roses attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had nothing on these guys. Yeah, yeah. These, these guys, guys yeah. Uh, you know... Uh, Ten Seconds of Love. They were to re to re articles written about how they were kind of doing somebody in the studio to get those sounds. You understand what I mean? Too young to fall in love. Also, uh, too, right? yeah, yeah, too young to fall in love. Uh, All right, you ready for this? Ready yeah. Anyways, it, it 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 big numbers. Redefined hair hair metal. Who's this? <laughs> Molly Crew. The, the hair the hairspray. But where they hair metal? 
They're, 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 they they gave the look of hair metal. They were, they were sleaze rock. But they weren't they were a hair metal band. I never considered rock. them a hair metal band. Yeah, but well, the hair was up there, right? Now. Like, they, they were scary as hell to look at. They yeah, had the attitude they were to dangerous. Go with, they, they were a street and, gang. and they said, "We don't care if we." What did they say? We don't care if we live, uh, live, live, live fast, die young. Yeah. That was their attitude. That was their attitude. They, they always said that. Live fast, die young. And now I guess they're second guessing that. All right, number five, accept balls to the wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. First time I heard that on the radio, I go, "Is this ACDC? Is this Judas Priest? But like, uh, what is this? Like, Wolf, Who, who's Wolf screaming Wolf? here? Who's screaming here?" And first time I heard the song "Balls to the Wall," I was just like. What is this? What is this? Ran out body. We already had our introduction to Restless and Wild. Yeah. Looking forward, and we, you know, to this day, we still we support the bands, right? So, yeah. they, they, you like the first album, you're gonna get every album afterwards, which we did. We got the Metal Heart, we got the Russian Roulette, then it got fuzzy. Anyways, this is Balls to the Walls, London Leather Boys. Oh. That was kind of what's the lyrics? Who's writing these lyrics? We didn't know Gabby was a woman. Oh. Now it makes sense. At the time, we're. Like, mm, that is a screamer, man. Not like that there's anything brutal. wrong with that. That was our second yeah, single, yeah. London Leather Boys. There you go. But, it, uh, you know, uh, hot, 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 for hot, me, hot. Winter Dreams. Oh, there you go. Ooh, Love that. Socks, I thought like. that was a great song. Cold winter nights, cold, cold winter, winter dreams, dreams. <laughs> reflecting <laughs> the sound of my heart. Cold <laughs> winter <laughs> dreams. All right. <laughs> there's our balls to the wall moment. Karaoke. Great album. Great album. Loved it. Right? Go what more did you say? All right. Number four. Another. So uh, here we go. Ozzy Osbourne, Bark at the Moon. Hmm. Randy Rhodes, unfortunately, choice, dies. The hype behind Ozzy now is just off the charts. Speak of the devil. Brad Gillis. Trying to transition. Trying to find. Don Airy connection with Gary Moore from the Coliseum days. Trying to squeeze Gary in there. What's yeah. going on? What's going What's on? A, all these things are happening. Uh, we're going to beat Black Sabbath's Live Evil album by doing Speak of the Devil, That's Ozzy right. Osbourne, all Black Sabbath songs. Yeah. We're going to beat Live Evil, Black Sabbath to the punch. Competition going on in the two. Randy's no longer there, unfortunately. What is going on? Where is this band going? Bring in Jakey Lee. Now we found out with Bark at the Moon. Jakey Lee from Rat. Or uh, what is he called? Right, right, before, right, before, right, before Rat. Before Rat. Yeah. Anyways, in Rat. We got Tommy Aldridge on the drums. Bob Daisley's back for consistency. And just so you know, Carmen Apice told me that he was brought in to fix the work of Tommy Aldridge. Car Carmen. Right? Carmen Apice. Carmen. Carmine. Carmine Apice. Sorry. I'm yes. Just, don't script the name. Carmine, Carmine was on the tour. He was on the tour, and then he was let go because, because he was buying his, selling his own T-shirts. And Sharon didn't like Sharon that. says, you are not having any of that, Carmine. Bugger off. <laughs> okay. So, so okay, go. let's go. You know, I, I remember freezing my butt off one day. We were trying to get tickets. So tired. From a friend so of a friend. Tired. Walked for hours. Minus 40 degree weather. Here. Yes. I got home. Got a hot chocolate and put on Bark at the Moon. That's my that's my memory of this album. Put on Bark at the Moon. Freezing. Cho hot chocolate. Trying to get back warmed up. And get... get Jakey Lee, his guitar playing at that time was hailed as, as a great, great uh, yeah. replacement for the great yeah. Randy Rhodes. Because he, he didn't sound like Randy. Journey to stuff. the center oh. of eternity. Fark I'm just moon. a rock and roll rebel. Great song. Uh, uh, what else? So rock tired. So, so Syrupy tired. ballad. So Not tired. since changes where Ozzy have, have such a great ballad yeah. as this. Uh, you know, of course, the production was pretty good. Goodbye to romance. Good. Everybody's gonna complain, but really, yeah, yeah. Uh, so tired was an all-in-out syrupy ballad that uh, got Ozzy's name into the good, into the print for good, and not yeah. just talking about biting heads off a of bat. So even you could even see Carmen a piece in the video of Bark at the Moon. Carmine, Carmine. 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 Don't stop. Carmine. stop saying Carmine. Carmine. What are you French? All right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, number three. You ready for this? Metallica. Oh. Hit the lights! And you were going to put all. this on. You I were. Was, I was. What's that? I was going to put this on. Kill them all, guys. Kill them all. Game changer. Game You were talking changer. about a game changer. Game changer. This came on and we're like, what? 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 The muting of the chords. Seek and destroy. What is this? And then a bass solo. A whole song. Anesthesia pulling teeth. A bass solo on an album. 
And we're trying to figure out what is that? What is with that? the flanger and the, and the wah, the wah wah pedal. Oh, yeah. And what are and what are these guys? Who are these guys? They still got pimples on their face. Four horsemen. On the back. The four horsemen. And we're listening to the four horsemen. And it's all ap 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 apocalyptic lyrics. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And what we're still going, what is this? What is this? It's, we, we haven't heard. Uh, Number it's of the Beast. Fast. Number it's of the Beast. Furious. The year before. Kill them all makes it sound like they're Iron Maiden's ABBA all of a sudden. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Or their their air supply. No I remorse, mean, no regret. Oh. Great album. Great Here album. we go. You know, again Johnny Zazula. You know, I, I, I got to give the guy credit. This, he, you know, he risked it all. He 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 put a mortgage on his home to make this album to produce this masterpiece of a of a, a debut for Metallica and it's it's I think the sound and the production Dave's gone like, Dave's, here's Dave. your bus ticket Dave yeah, thanks for it's those five nice songs knowing you. thanks for those songs don't use my them. stuff Easy. don't use my stuff first album comes out Mustang 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 <laughs> that's right. Mustang that's right that's right Kirk Hammett comes in out of Exodus out of Exodus uh, out, out of Exodus, Exodus. comes yeah, in the yeah. back door and here we go. There's the there's the Metallica that we know and love today. While Dave Sulky in the corner forming Megadeth, yep. this album beats him to the punch. Yep. And they use this stuff. And I'm glad they use this stuff because this stuff was pretty damn good. So yep. here we are with Kill 'Em All, a game changer, the beginning of thrash metal throughout the rest of the '80s. Yep. Start to this album. And again, I can't reiterate how it blew everybody's mind. What is this? Number. Here we go. This might be a little controversial between number one and number two, and you tell us maybe you think this should be number one or number two. Iron Maiden, peace, peace of, of mind. mind. Peace of We've mind. got Nico behind the drums. Clyde and according Bruce out, is on Nico record and say, hmm, what can he do? Let's make him do this. Opens up with Where Eagles There. I don't want to use two double bass. I don't want to oh. use a double bass drum. I want to do it with one bass drum. Maybe and they, and like they said, they used to open da -da -da -da. open the show with that song. Yeah, yeah. I was there Nico the tour, was yeah. all over athletic, Mister yeah. Athletic. Yeah. Talk about athletic rock. He's an athletic drummer. Songs are getting a little more progressive, like in terms of Revelation. Oh, where where goes there? God of Earth and a whole to bow down and hear. And you have cry. Quest for Fire, which is kind of questionable. Yeah. But you know what the first you know what the first song I heard off this on the radio. What? Sunlight falling, falling on, on my steel. steel. <laughs> so I mean, guys, everything. Steve's been on record as saying this is probably the greatest. He, in his estimation, the greatest Iron Maiden album. Yeah. And it's got everything, right? Uh, to Tame a well, Land. That's to, uh, one that everybody's like. Eee. No, no. To Tame a Land. I've grown to love eee. that song. To me, it's more like Quest. You need for a fire. closer like Hallowed Be Thy Name. That you're stretching. You now you're reaching a little. You're reaching. Well, I a love little. To, to me, you it's know? Quest of Fire. But everything else. You know, when the dinosaurs were on the earth. Quest for Fire, that was based on the movie that was very controversial at the time. That's the whole right. movie released without any dialogue, and yeah. that's what that's on. A lot of grunts. Uh, a lot of grunts. Die with your boots on? Okay, the, yo, hold on a second. Here's my problem with Die with Your Boots On. They just repeat Die with Your Boots On maybe like, you know, nah, 50 times. But they times. repeat it differently. <laughs> Not blackout. They really had a blackout. I don't know. If you're going to die, you're going to die. If you're going to die, you're going to die. If you're going to die, die, die with, with Your Boots On. If you're going to die, 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 then you're going to die. Great song. Great song. Still Life, Dave Murray's contribution. A lot of people love that song. Still Life's For a me, great that's song. a little bit of a yeah. That's no, a, a, Nico doing his uh, Idi Amin impression, and then they take it back. And again, right. okay, so let's go back. Maiden could do no wrong. The momentum is in full and Coney tilt. Coney Hatch is opening up for them. Coney Hatch opened for them, yes, yes, yes here in Canada. Yeah, yeah. So uh, again, I saw that tour. Uh, you got everything. You, you know, they're really, really doing the, the world tour which leads up to world slavery where they dominated but you can see where they're solid they know the who they are they're the doing momentum. what they are great production from martin birch and uh again uh, just maiden is the band at this point all right here we go alan oh, number one roll up the sleeves number one it, it, it had to be deal holy diver holy diver you be down don't to talk to strangers yeah you know, the first song out of this was, of course, played on the radio. The first song was Rainbow in the Dark. Yes. I remember hearing it and saying, oh, okay. Beep, 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 you know, beep, beep, I said, it's a little bit 
his rainbow era because you got the yeah. keyboards yeah. but he's also doing a black sabbath thing yeah. so i see where he's going he's doing his own thing and it was called dio with mr vivian campbell on guitar jimmy bain on bass yes and the great Vinny, Vinny a piece a piece not a piece a piece Vinny a piece on drums those albums with Vinny on drums are some of the best drummed albums the fills it's all the about the fills he's unbelievable the, he does behind everything. the beat and the fills and then, you and know we need some we need something you know and, and, and it's missing you know uh, uh, Holy Di uh, Rainbow and Darks missing something. Jimmy just Jimmy Bain just walks up and goes da 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 da. That's it. There you go. What's what's hard about this? And that that keyboard riff, cheesy, just, just brought the song to another it level. Did. And, and, and That's cheesy as it is. The first song I heard was actually Holy Diver. I thought it was something like Heaven and Hell because it goes da 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 da. That's what I said. There, he's putting all his bands, all his influences, and he's yeah. making it his own. Yeah. A great album, guys. To this day. I think to today, this all day. Dio fans will agree. It's either the first or the second, Last in Line or Holy Diver, which yeah. is their favorite, but usually tends to lean towards Holy Diver, firing off on all guns. He's been in Rainbow, right? He's, he's been an elf, sorry, he's been an elf. Honing his craft, honing his voice. Now he's in Rainbow, just going off on all tangents with dungeons and dragons and stuff. Then he's in Sabbath, touching evil, right? Again, learning, being ex more experienced. What is he, almost 40 years old when he does, does Holy Diver? Oh, he's a big he was like 38 Adrian, years old. Adrian. He must have been 38 years old. He's a seasoned professional at the peak. Holy Diver was not just this one first album. This was a, an accumulation, like you said, of all of ex his experiences. Boom, right there. Drop Stand it. up and drop shout. It. Drop it. Drop it, Alan. Holy Diver. There Number one for 1983. Great choice coming in, Holy Diver deal, and I hope you like that list. The next ones are going to get more complicated because exactly. now the floodgates are open. The record companies are saying, we're on to something here. Chingy, ching, 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 ching. Let's go get some more of these bands. There we go. There's our top 10 for 1983. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we like doing them.